Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, is the rising of the West book, does it represent the end of time that the flag or army of Rasulullah, peace be upon him, will rise from the West to be with Mahdi alayhi salam? The rising of the West, uh, the book on the, the rising of the West is about the reality of the sun and the moon and guidance. The Prophet described that the sun would rise from the West. One, that there would be a polar shift and the earth as we know it would be shift and there would be a tremendous tribulation in this shifting. Earth shifting is not something easy, means then the weather, everything would be, be altered. And the spiritual understanding is also that the sun is, a, is, the, is the point of knowledge, that which is eternal, that it's leaving the Eastern world which was traditionally religious and spiritual, China, India and the Middle East. These were spiritual hubs which they basically sold their religion and they bought the material world. So you see the consumption of material desires the strongest from China, India and the Middle East, largest consumers of gold. And all these realities of dunya, that they want dunya. So the, then the knowledges, now that sun has shifted, so it means then the knowledges of spirituality would rise from the West. And then that reality and haqqaiqs would rise from the West. So that these people from the West would be learning knowledges that would no longer be taught in the East. So it means then these are ishraqiyoon those whom Allah granted them to be like rising suns. They bring about a knowledge and a reality that would rise from the west and would begin to teach the east again. Because these knowledges can't be taught in the east, most people would be killed teaching these realities. So it has a deep, deep meaning and that that reality of knowledge must come to prepare people for the last days. You know there people were asking about Sayyidina Mahdi Salaam, but imagine without these knowledges who would be in the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi Salaam? People who don't believe in intercession, people whom don't believe in the Mawli the Nabi people who don't believe in the station of the greatness of Prophet how could they accept Sayyidina Mahdi if they don't accept the reality of Prophet as their king and as their sovereign? If they don't, you think they would, re they would respect the authority of Sayyidina Mahdi No. So that means then the, the heart and the knowledges have to be put into its order, that the haqqaiqs and the realities have to come out for people to understand. That's why these are like swords when these knowledges come out. That people have to understand the greatness of Prophet and the Sultanate of Sayyidina Muhammad and as a result of that Sultanate then they accept then the authority of Sayyidina Mahdi entering into this earth and wish to serve Sayyidina Mahdi So the knowledge is more powerful than the sword for the sword in the hand of an ignorant person is of no value and basically harms everyone. But the knowledge in a heart of a servant of Allah then can do wonders and can change hearts and can change the destinies of people with their knowledges and good character. They don't need a sword to, to smack somebody on the head, what they need is a good talk with good character so that people's hearts open towards realities. That people's hearts open just from these talks on words. Many people have been emailing and commenting that, I don't understand or I never understood the extent of the words we use and how bad they were and what it was doing to us. And that's when we talked about even shaitan gives a disclaimer, he's using the word cursed. So nobody can come and say, I didn't know these were words that would curse me, I said, but you, it's, you're using the word cursed. But for some reason we have a veil upon our understanding and people are in, in, a, in a cloud of difficulty. So then these clouds have to be taken, people have to 
awaken and their hearts have to awaken to good character. As a result they become Mahdiyun in which Allah sends a light within their heart and this is a light of love and ishq and good character. They said, and then the people whom accompany these good character shaykhs then their students must all have good character. That's why you go to a store and you, and you find the employees are rude and, and they, they have bad manners, it's because the manager has bad manners and is rude. But if the manager is good and has good character and, and good mannerisms will convey that to the students. So all of these schools of manners are so important that to conduct oneself with, with humbleness, with good character, good manners and teach a path of love and tolerance and patience and, and all of the, the good characteristics. And most of all to speak with a good tongue inshaAllah through a, through a world of, of immense darkness and that darkness covering everywhere inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Shaykh Nurjan. Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, Sayyidi, what is the difference between Masoom and Mahfuz? Mahsoom and Mahfuz, Masoom, Masoomeen means that they are, they are ones whom Allah made to be infallible, that they, they're not sinning. And then these are of a, of a reality from the Nabeen. That they're they're masoom, they're they're not they're infallible. They don't make the sins of mankind to the extent that mankind are making. So they have a very noble, immense reality. Mahfuz then are those whom Allah loves that are not from that reality, but Allah guards the Allah guards them. So mahfuz is to be guarded. They make a mistake, they may do wrong but Allah will then purify them, cleanse them, inspire them to ask for forgiveness so that they come back onto their path and, and complete what Allah wants for them to complete, inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah uh, Can we connect quickly without actually reciting anything? Can we connect quickly without reciting anything? If Allah wants to grant whatever Allah wants to grant but the, the normal and the way of this reality is to recite, to cleanse, to purify, to have good characteristics. So the people whom come and claim, oh I, I can see Jesus Christ, I can see this, I can do this, I can do that usually are possessed. So that's something completely different. This way is a very difficult way. If you've listened for the last 10 years you can pretty much pick up my tone that this is a very difficult path and extreme amount of testing and Allah is going to send a servant through many, many rigorous types of testings to see if they're pure and if they're sincere. And Allah doesn't bestow upon any servant that which they're not worthy of, that they're not prepared for. Allah says in Holy Qur'an, don't ask for that which will cause you harm. So means then everything is a, is a common sense that somebody training, somebody practicing, somebody testing then they're experiencing. But when somebody is not doing all of those good characteristics and those good deeds and they're experiencing means the jinn are playing with them, which is very easy. The people who are hardcore demonic they see many things and they're inspired by many things because the demons put the, this energy upon them so that they can see with the demonic power, with the demonic uh, energy. So this is what uh, this path is based on to take that away, that to approach through the path of sincerity through good deeds and good actions. And once we did these good deeds and good actions then to make the noble connection. Rabbit al-Sharif means to connect our heart to that energy. For someone who does not connect, if you gave them energy what would they become? A pharaoh. They would think they are the Lord Most High, Pharaoh said, Rana Rabbi al-A'la. 
He says, I, I bring life and death when he would debate Nabi Musa because Nabi Musa said, how you can call yourself God? This God of mine is creates life and death. He says, very simple, watch. He called two people, he said, kill this one and let that one free. So I'm also the Lord of life and death. I just killed that one and I let that one free. So it means this, this is a craziness and the badness of character. If you give a, a person who's not of a noble nature, clean and sincere nature, any type of energy they become a pharaoh and they have the I-ness within themselves and they find themselves to be independent and, and not answer to anything. So the tariqah is based on a path of humility to be nothing, to be nothing. As a result of their nothingness Allah draws near to them from His somethingness and they become empowered by Allah's Divinely powers inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, what is the wisdom behind the two dots in the Ya in the name of Imam Hussain? The two dots in the, in the Ya of Imam Hussain. Have you read our articles? <laughs> Where do you get that from? <laughs> Alhamdulillah, it's good. You read the articles and come back and test me if I remember the articles. <laughs> the Ya of Imam Al Hussain is the Yaqeen. And that's the, the immense energy and reality that this is the yaqeen from the oceans of certainty and that yaqeen is that Sayyid al-Shuhada that only through that certainty and through that ya can you witness the reality. And Allah granted this title to Imam al Hussein as salam Sayyid al-Shuhada the master of the, the martyrs and the martyrs are the ones whom witness. Means that Allah says, don't deem them to be dead but they're very much alive. He's the master of those whom are very much alive because of the difficulty that He put upon His physical self. As a result of that difficulty then that's an eternal station Allah has granted. And its evidence is in Allah granting that name because the haqqaiq and the reality of Imam and Hussain is, salam is an ancient reality. And as a result when Allah wanted to name that reality in dunya then these are the inspired names from paradise realities that Allah described Imam Hussain is, salam with a ya and Imam al-Hasan doesn't have that ya. So then this is a reality for Imam al Hussein as salam and that's why the, the key and the reality of Karbala and Imam al Hussein as salam carries the reality of Rahim while Imam al Hasan as salam carries the reality of Rahman. So then these two attributes that dress the earth and the paradises. The earth reality and the reality of manifestations and the world of manifestation, the mulk is under Sifat al-Rahman and that is from the reality of Imam al-Hasan as salam. Allah gave his soul that gift and that reality. And for Imam al Hussein as salam was the reality of Sifat al-Rahim which is from the unseen creation of Malakut. As a result of that reality of unseen then the life destiny was to be very severe and as a result of the severity of the physical life that is the reality of Sayyid al-Shuhada, one whom is the master of all those who see the heavenly kingdom because he's the dress of Sifat al-Rahim, Salaamun Qawlun al-Rabbil Raheem. That the immensity of that reality is deep within the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and is the reality of Imam al Hussein. That the salam qawlum al Rabbil Raheem, the Rabbil Raheem is Imam al Hussein and that we need his salams within the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad. That's why Ahlul Basira, the people whom see, it's not a physical sight, it's their spiritual sight within the heart because this Muhammadan heart within it is the reality of Imam al Hussein salam, if that makes sense to people. 
Sayyidi, what effect do birth names have upon children's personality? Everybody's name has an effect upon their personality. Every name has a secret and every secret has a name. Everything that we call has a, has a tajalli, that was the whole talk of these, these spelling, spelling casting. So when, when somebody was trained in casting, they would put these words together to manipulate an energy outcome. So then imagine the reality of names, North, what the heck is that? What is the tajalli of something like that? That's because everybody lost their minds now, West. Then one other kid is named one, two, three, seven, eight, nine. What is that? What is the tajalli of that? Then you see Azimat, the Prophet asked his nation that, name your children after me. So that the name Muhammad on the day of judgment is the largest. Can you imagine? And the name Muhammad on this earth now is the most popular name for a boy on earth. The name Muhammad because Prophet asked it and Allah inspired everybody, name your child Muhammad So that on the day of judgment then what's the most populous name of people that will be raised? And that's not even them knowing the reality that when you name and every, every male has a Muhammadan name but do they answer to that name? And do they rise to the occasion of their Muhammadan reality? And that's what the tariqahs are teaching, that be Muhammadiyoon, that all the shaykhs they have reached to their Muhammadan name, Muhammad Nazim al-Haqqani. As a result that Muhammadan reality of Prophet is dressing, they share in the dividends of every salawat, of every creature and creation. When you read Dalal al-Khirat, the, the praising is that, Ya Rabbi bless Prophet for every drop of water, for every drop of rain, for every leaf on every tree, of all the, the eloquence of how they praise because they know that all the angels are making salawats. As every drop of rain has an angel, that angel is making salawat on Prophet Every creature and every creation its praise is a salawat, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Sayyidina Muhammad. All of them are making salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad Then the ones whom reach to become Muhammadiyoon because their name is in there. So Muhammad Alameen, Muhammad Nazim al-Haqqani, every shaykh has their Muhammadan name. As a result then every they take in the dividend of that immense barakah. So every time these salawats are going, Allah dressing upon Prophet and then they receive a dividend check for all these Muhammadiyoon, they, they share in that blessing. And that's the immensity of the barakah and the immensity of that light and that love. So it means it's, it's immensely powerful becomes an immense source of barakah and blessings. And that's the love that Prophet has, he doesn't want to receive it all for himself. He gives to all those that you be with whom you love. If your love was for me and this is what Allah is dressing me then take from that and dress them from that. And they share in that dividend just for us to understand what type of word you could use. It's like the greatest investment in life that you could have is praising upon Allah through the praising of Sayyidina Muhammad Because by saying, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa la ali Sayyidina Muhammad you praise Allah and you praise the reality of Prophet greatest investment that gives to you all of eternity. And its, and its return is something that can't be understood. So any time that you have keep making salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad InshaAllah. Uh, as
Is it recommended to change the child's name if they're very naughty? If the name is too much for them to handle, you, you don't have to change the name, don't call them by that name anymore. Don't call somebody by a heavy name. So I went to UPS store and the man's name was Azim but he was very angry. But we have Azim too, he's not that… he's not angry like that. But the name is heavy so for a common person to be called Azim and every time I went to the store I was like, what's wrong with you? Why are you so angry like this? And I knew his name was Azim. So one time I came in and I said, you should call yourself like, uh, I don't know what I say his name <laughs> should be, something much more softer because the name in which you're calling is you're calling that tajalli upon the person. From Allah, azimat, azimat, azimat and that person not capable of carrying that. And as a result they become a very fiery character. And that's just one example. So it means that the name in which somebody gave their child, especially in Pakistan for some reason they have very elaborate religious powerful names. Izzatullah, there's a kid named Izzatullah, <laughs> he's not going to carry that. So this is that's not going to be an easy name, better to, to call him something softer, more, much easier, Muhammad, Ahmad. Mustafa, something easy, easy and, and peaceful and loving and, and brings a, a peacefulness to their tajalli. So yes, tariqah is very, is very involved in that. That's why most tariqah people don't have these types of names because they ask the shaykh for the name for the child. So the shaykhs don't give these, these sort of heavy names for people to try to carry, inshaAllah. Uh, as Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa How does one know if he's doing the meditation correctly? Any signs or something? Please forgive my ignorance. Well, if you ask that, then must not be correctly because the meditation it has its own evidence and means that as soon as you're meditating, you're feeling energy, you're feeling the connection, you're feeling uh, the, that the things around you are changing, the energy within you are changing. If you have to ask that you know you're not feeling anything then you have to assume that maybe go back and read all of the steps and make sure that you're doing all of the steps according to what's been written. If you're mixing and matching from Buddhist, from, from Zen, from all these different backgrounds then no, nothing will match. So they don't want anything mixed into the formula and they want you to participate at every level. That's what we said before, one you get the book so that you understand how to do the meditation. You wash, you clean, you sit, you make your connection, you make the connection to the shaykh and say that you're nothing and every day practicing a little bit to make the connection with the shaykh. Then you practice breathing, then you practice doing your awrad with that connection and immediately you begin to start to feel the energy within the heart, you feel you know all the different testings that are coming and all of the different realities that begin to open. And then participating, supporting, practicing and then everyone knows themselves how much they're involved. If they're truly involved, truly sincerely trying then alhamdulillah it's very powerful. It's not something that, that goes unrecognized in which you have to wonder if you've connected or not. You will know you're connected. So other emails come in and say, Shaykh I feel like I'm having a heart attack. So that's the scenario is that the energy is so strong and they grab your heart in an instant and begin to crush. So it's very real, very powerful and but all the steps have to be, to, to be done. If you leave out a step it's like a wire that's not connected to the battery of the car. So I built the whole car but the wire on the battery I left it out for right now but then the whole car is not going to start. So that's why all of the steps are included in, in the tariqah teachings. That wash, put your all your practices, your, your prayers, you keep your ta'weez, you make the connection, you, you go through the steps of how to connect, visualize the shaykh in front of you, ask for that light to be connected to you, have good character, uh, be of service, put your name out there so that you're under their nazar. Uh, post links, make comments, everything, everything is a part of like the tariqah. The, it's like a zawiyah, since we live in a virtual zawiyah 
there's no difference. If somebody came, if we had just a little zawiyah in the village and every day somebody came but sat somewhere hidden, never came to say hello to the shaykh and kind of like was a mysterious shadow in the room, they would get no recognition because it's tariq al-adab, it's not the adab. The adab is to be recognize the shaykh. No one else when you come into the room are you to greet other than the shaykh, Assalamu alaikum and then you sit in your position that you've greeted the shaykh and now you take your position of tafakkur and contemplation. So it's, it's the same reality. While everybody is greeting and making comments to each other, they have to first greet the shaykh. It's not about a social club where you call and comment to everybody else but you greet the shaykh, you email the shaykh. If you don't have any connection with the shaykh, you never email the shaykh, you never make any comments that here I'm on, I'm, I'm logging in, I'm not just a silent person watching on my couch. That's the person that is coming forth with the adab and the manners of tariqah. So tariqah is not you hide yourself, tariqah is to recognize the shaykh, recognize the authority of the shaykh, introduce yourself always to the presence of the shaykh. And then when they talk about hiding yourself means that now you're being dressed, now you're being dressed, now you're being dressed, never talk, never give examples, never give sobats. Keep yourself to be of service cleaning, washing so people think you're nobody but you're the one whom they're dressing and dressing and dressing and dressing. That's what it means to sit in the back and, and hide yourself. Doesn't mean never come in to say hello to the shaykh and sit in the back like you're, you're, you're not even wanting to be there. So this is completely different. So the virtual tariqah, no different. You log on, give salams to the shaykh. Email, give salams to the shaykh. You don't have to ask what color to paint your house. Just I'm giving salams to you shaykh that please pray for me. I'm in difficulty, I, my work is like this and just pray for me and continuously keeping that connection. Then you see them making comments on every video, we see them. They go to the store, they get something, we see them. They go to the charity, they donate something, we see them. They go onto Facebook, they make comments, we see them. That's a virtual zawiyah, that that person is recognized. That person is under the nazar of the shaykh and under the nazar of whatever the shaykh's eyes are under. So whomever is guarding the shaykh's eyes is also witnessing all of those activities. So that's the, that's the virtual tariqah is no different than the, the physical tariqah. And the physical tariqahs, everyone knows that. So they keep their focus, they, they give their salams, they, they come and ask for du'as so they, they, they have the nazar and the, the, the connection with the, the reality of the shaykh inshaAllah. As Salaamu Shaykh Nurjan <laughs> Walaykum As Salaam Regarding manifestation from positive or negative words, does it matter if it is said by tongue or by heart? Yeah, I would imagine somebody cursing in their heart is, 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 is far more dangerous for the internal sickness. So in manifestation, imagine somebody who's angry and in their heart continuously talking to themselves with words of anger. They must be very toxic inside. <laughs> You're manifesting horrific energies, internalizing them and even you see them to the extent they become red in their face. So they must be cooking themselves with diseases. Then the other reality is you say, no I'm going to start cursing out loud, but then they describe there's a creature being fed. So everyone has two, two creatures, you feed that bad one is going to be very strong until he overtakes you in which now you will have no control over your mouth, no control over your character and all you'll have is remorse because continuously does things that are just devastating to your life. So how did I get that is because you fed that one more. But the other one in which you talk sweet, you talk calm every time you're angry you start making your salawat, start making all of the practices that Allah has inspired, go wash, go make your salat, then the angelic one is becoming more powerful, more powerful, more powerful until the angelic one now is supporting you. And now every du'a that angelic one is reciting for you 
to be successful. And that's the one that we want to take into the grave that begins to say, I'm your Ramadan, I'm your fasting, I'm your Nasr Shaban, I'm your charity, I'm everything you did good, I'm here, I'm the embodiment of these actions that you did. Allah made me to be like a knight, a heavenly knight in which my life is to guard you. So that's, that's what these realities of manifestation. So the heavenly is immense, look at the, the etiquettes and the awrads and the recitations that we have, what type of powers are those? Well, so what they wanted to point out is, look at the other, look, look at how these people talk, well what is this language, what are these words they use? So yeah, and people can dissect all these words and, and find, you know, how horrific these words are. As Salaam Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Is it okay for us to decline dinner or even religious invitations due to potential bad energy in the association even though the organizers are Muslims? Sure, you, you can decline anything you want. The, just because somebody's Muslim isn't a, a key to your heart. The shaitan entered into heaven. Okay. Shaitan entered into heaven to bring down Sayyidina Adam as -salam. So if shaitan can enter heaven, he can definitely enter into a masjid. So that's not a… that's not a key that you're safe. So yeah, anywhere you feel your heart is not going to be correct, they're not going to talk correctly and they even may talk against your belief. You know they get to two or three people together, they feel very proud and, and strong and they say, oh this one. He believes in the love of Prophet now let us teach you. And yeah, you can get yourself in a lot of difficulty. So always follow the heart and less exposure to, to, to human beings the better one is. The pandemic are humans that they cast upon people, their doubt, their sicknesses, their bad character. Only time you want to be around humans is when you're doing your zikr and being of service. You go out and serve and feed people, alhamdulillah and, and take care of your family in these days of difficulty. As Salaamu Shaykh Nurjan Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, how to manage having a Muslim name and our non-Muslim parents gave us a name they loved, how to avoid disappointing them? Yeah, if you're living at home then you know you keep your Muslim name to yourself and to your friends who, who know you as a, as a Muslim and your interaction on the internet. You don't have to rub it into their emotions and to bother you know family members who don't understand. But if you're living outside of the home then it's, it's very… it's okay that they call you by whatever name they want. They can call you by what, what you call a, a konya and a, a word of endearment. So many times in, in Arabic culture they would have a word of endearment, Habibi, Ya Nuri, Ya Aini, Oh my eyes, Oh my love. So make up a phrase of endearment <laughs> and say, Mom can you call me this, this word of endearment, my little bear. And say, okay, your little bear, but it doesn't have to be the word that they were using. And then amongst the others you use your Muslim name so that it's not something in their face and, and, and to be disruptive and, and to, to, to bother each other. So you can come up with a phrase of endearment and say, I'd, I'd prefer to be called… I can't think of names off, the, off bat but a word of endearment and then you know you use the Muslim names of, uh, with the Muslims inshaAllah. The main thing is not to bother parents, not to bother loved ones, it's not about creating conflict and difficulty, it's about living in a state of peace that I just want a sense of peace, I want to, to be known as Ali and I feel the love and the blessings of that and alhamdulillah and you do that in the times that are appropriate. And if you're known as John uh, amongst your family then you say, okay, you know think of a, a name of endearment and there's nothing also wrong with the word John, you can be called Yahya. And that's a dear name, biblical name, religious name and Islamic name. So alhamdulillah try to make peace and keep keep the way of peace inshaAllah. Uh, Shaykh 
شاء الله سبحانه و بك رب العزة ما يسيفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين بحرمة محمد المصطفى بسيل سورة الفاتحة